All right, what's up, guys? We are here with uh, David Jacob. Um, David is one of the most interesting members of Default Kings for a million different reasons that I can spend an hour breaking down. Um, but yeah, David, uh, brother, I appreciate you hopping on here. Uh, dude, to kick this thing off, can you just tell the people um, about the the physical results that you experience in Default Kings? Yeah, so um, I dropped... What, like it was, I think it was like 15 pounds in the first like two and a bit weeks. Um, and then I've maintained that since I basically have now graduated Default Kings. I've been, you know, comfortable at that weight. And it's the first step in a long journey to get back to what I used to look used to look like, but it was basically effortless. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, like I've I've known you for a while now. And, uh, we do a lot of zoom chats together and we've hung out a bunch of times in person for a bunch of different events. And you literally look just through zoom, like way leaner and way healthier and way more energetic. And I know a bunch of your, your friends and colleagues in person, I've told you that too. So yeah, dude, that's awesome. 15 pounds maintaining that. And, uh, that that's what we love to see, right? That maintenance. Um, so I guess kind of walk me through the process of before you started default Kings, what were you exactly struggling with and like what were you looking to change when you started yeah so uh i've been running my own businesses now for the past two and a half years yeah. um before that i was in a corporate job where i worked you know 70 odd hours a week minimum yeah and before that i was at college so you know last kind of plus minus five years has been post-college and it was like okay cool when i was at college i had you know, three, four hours a day to spend in the gym. And I was yeah. jacked and I was exactly like what I was like, I'm going to look like this forever. And then you start work and you're like, oh, I, I have to live an actual life. And I can't yeah. do all of the things that I would ordinarily do, like eat nothing but chicken breast and broccoli because I'm at home all the time or in the gym. Um, and I found myself when I was in my corporate job, I was working for such long hours that I didn't want to go to the gym at the end of the day. And the commute meant that going in the morning was just not feasible. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do it, but I was still kind of like active enough. Like I'd go out and see friends and whatever. And I'd still rack up probably between, you know, five and 6,000 steps a day. So it was that little bit easier to not kind of hold up and let the weight pile on. But yeah. I picked up pretty uncomfortable habits now that I look back on them. Mm -hmm. um, so like I'd be, you know, out drinking with colleagues or friends or whatever, like four yeah. times a week, like at least. Um, and I was drinking a lot of the calories that I was consuming. Um, yeah. Yeah. then as soon as like COVID hit, I was cooped up like in my bedroom working and then the lines between like work and like regular home life blur. Yeah. Gyms were shut. So it was like, oh, now I can't go to the gym. So like things just kind of got even more lazy. And then it was like, oh, do I really want to go? As you can probably tell, the accent gives it away. Like I'm in England. Yeah. Do I really want to go for a walk in the pissing rain? Not really. Is there any real motivation to kind of get back into like strenuous activity at home? Not really. Uh, once that ended and I started the business, then it was like, okay, I work 12 hours a day now every day. Yeah. Um, the yeah. gym that is near me, like is a solid two and a half hour like schlep there and back and i have no desire to do that because i can't take that time out and the gym to actually do all of it um so it was kind of like a series of just like negative habits that added yeah. up um and made it seem like it was way more difficult to yeah. get back to where i wanted to be or at least take the first step on getting back where i used to be uh versus you know making it actually really reasonable and really easy to do those things, mm. which is what default Kings really allowed me to do and open my mind to. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I appreciate you kind of breaking down that entire process. Cause I think a lot of people relate to that process and it seems like you had that natural progression of having more and more added to your plate and then taking more like dedicated time for yourself away from your plate or your other responsibilities, which just yeah. made it even more difficult. And I remember when we first met and we started talking you told me about this, um, right? Like this commute to the gym that, you know, was going to take two and a half hours. And yeah. this, this, it sounded when you were describing your situation, like it did sound impossible to, to figure this out. Right. Yeah. You own multiple companies. You're one of the hardest working human beings that I personally know. So how did we help you solve those problems specifically? What did we actually do to make that easier for you? Yeah. It was just kind of so changing my mindset on like, so 
when I was at college and before that I was like super sporty I played probably 10 plus different sports throughout my like early early adulthood like you know late teenage years whatever and all of that time I spent in the gym so I was already like really conditioned to be in the gym like go and do sports for cardio et cetera et cetera et cetera but when all of that kind of fades away and you have like a corporate job or you run your own businesses and like time is money yeah the idea of going and doing you know two three hours of x y and z or like spending two hours in the gym because that's the way that I used to train just mm-hmm. didn't align with that at all mm-hmm. so when I started speaking to you and when I started speaking to Joey the logic was okay well could you give up 40 minutes mm-hmm. three days a week mm-hmm. obviously like yeah anyone can right like I have 40 minutes between my calls so it's not a big deal and then it was like okay well you can't get to the gym in that time that's unreasonable we agree can you work out at home? And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess. Like, I have some small weights at home. I have a pull-up bar. Yeah, like, I can I can make that happen. But, like, in my mind, that's not a real workout. And the response that I got from you and Joey was like, okay, we'll see. If it is a real workout, if it isn't, then we'll make it harder. If you can commit to doing this, you're already doing more than you're doing before. So you're going to see a positive uplift anyway. And I was like, that makes sense. Okay, I can do that. Uh, and then it was just like getting away from my desk and walking for mm. like 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, and honestly, I think the one, like even now um, on like super busy days when I have a workout scheduled, I will skip a, a workout, right? Because like when stuff blows up, it's like, okay, do I do I want to hit this 40 minute workout or do I want to put out the fire that's going on in the business that no one else can solve? You have yeah. to prioritize the business, right? Mm. But will I still make sure that I'll go for a walk? Like, even if it's like a 10 minute walk, even if it's a 20 minute walk, like I'll still make sure I do something right. because I know that is going to keep the, like keep the, the, the wolves at the door at bay right. way easier than me forcing myself to go, Oh no, I have to stop doing this. I have yeah. to go and do my workout. Cause otherwise X, Y, and Z, yeah. like I can still go and do the walks. I can eat healthily every day. And mm-hmm. it's not an issue because I know right. that like the basics are taken care of. And so long as I'm active every day, I'm doing something right. Dude, I love that so much because I remember when we first spoke, one of the biggest uh, like roadblocks I saw for you was literally almost like the beliefs that it was more difficult than it needed to be. Yeah. Right. Like that person you told me where like Gabe, it's, I can't possibly find time to work out. You know, it's a, it's a two and a half hour jog to my gym. Yeah. And now you're here saying like, even on the hardest days where one of your multiple businesses requires your attention, you still find that easy way to have those healthy default actions take place, right? You can still find the healthy foods. You can still move your body. And that kind of keeps, like you said, the walls up, so to speak, so that you're still moving the right track, still maintaining your body weight, even on the craziest test days possible, right? Yeah. And I think the honestly, like the, the big like mindset shift for me wasn't even about like the physical activity side of it it was the diet side Mm. so like now there are there are checks and balances in my mind that I have to go through like when I eat Mm. and when I like for example like I'm you've we've known each other a long time I drink like a fish and it's part of like being English English culture is very much like drinking heavy Mm -hmm. but changing what I drink and being intentional about how I drink has fundamentally meant that keeping that weight off is infinitely easier so like, I I love playing pool. Me and my buddies go and play pool. You know, a couple of like three four times a month. I would say like once a week plus minus, mm-hmm. and that for me is normally like a seven eight pints of beer night as yeah. a standard. Yeah, yeah. And literally switching that from seven eight pints of beer to three pints of Guinness, and then it's like okay, if you want to drink more, you can, but you have to switch to you know like a vodka soda. Mm. just that small mindset change of like okay it's no more beer it's now on vodka sodas means that i cut out like 60 percent of the calories that i would ordinarily have drunk that day right and at that point after three guinnesses i don't particularly want to drink that much more because i stop like my you feel heavy yeah. you've if, 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 if you've ever sat and dr- tried to drink like seven pints of guinness you just feel dead afterwards like you honestly want to go to sleep mm. whereas three pints of guinness is enough that i feel like i'm i i've drunk as much as I want to and then if I'm going out it'll be like okay cool I can just stay on clear spirits and soda water yeah at half the calories and not feel like I'm missing out so it's yeah. just I think the mindset switch of about it being work smarter not harder right right yeah that that's huge too because uh like you said like you're able to maintain those social events that are really important you right going and playing pool with your buddies 
without necessarily just having to like be the person who's like, guys, like, sorry, I'm not going anymore. I'm not playing pool with yeah. you guys anymore. Instead of just completely cutting that out of your life, something that's important to you that I know personally, like those personal relationships and those events, yeah. those experiences are really, really important to you. Now you can manage them without like having them be a massive detriment to your personal health, right? Yeah. So I love to see that, right? Because that's that's the reason that health matters in the first place is so you can be better for the people who you love, for the people around you. 100%. And, you know, there's no point in being healthy on paper while cutting everybody else who out of your life who you love. So I love yeah. to hear that, bro. Um, so, um, a few more things I'm, I'm kind of curious about is when, before you started, had you tried to like gain control of the weight gain at any time before, or was it a, was it almost like a downward spiral where you didn't really even try to control it? Um, good question. I, I don't think there was ever a point where I was like, okay, this is like genuinely getting out of hand. I think it was kind of like death by a thousand cuts. Right. Um, saying that so probably like mm, right before i started the business so like two and a bit years ago probably two and a half years ago now um i i kind of like changed my environment so i moved in with some friends i whenever i like so i i moved back with my parents uh during covid because rent in london is a joke mm -hmm. so i moved back with them and like when you sit and eat home food for a while you kind of get comfortable home food is different from the food that you cook yourself as soon as I moved back in, uh, or as soon as I moved out of my parents' place and like into my own place, I found that actually the weight fell off a little bit. And I was like, oh, cool. Great. I just need to maintain this. Right. Then COVID hit again. I moved back to my parents and the whole thing cycled. And then at that point, it was death by a thousand cuts. So I think there's a lifestyle element where like when I am in like entire control of what I eat, it is easier because I know consciously to make the right things, eat the right things, eat minimal, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But when I was at home, it's like, okay, I have to be way more intentional about what I'm eating because they're not thinking the same way as I am. So at the point in which I moved back home, I think it was kind of like, oh, okay, I just, I'm just not going to think about it because I have other priorities. I've got to start the business blah, 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 blah. and my focus was elsewhere. Mm. So I didn't intentionally think about okay what am i putting in my body what am i doing how am i optimizing for x y and z i just kind of was like listen if food gets put in front of me i would rather not think about it because i'm trying to grow two businesses or trying to grow a business mm -hmm. at that point yeah it almost like became a mindless part of your life 100 right? yeah. so many other things were taking up all that mental capacity so what yeah. was it that became the wake-up call that refocused you on your health and what you're putting in your body uh funnily enough it's a photo of us Mm -hmm. in tampa the first yeah. time we met yeah. and i looked at myself and i was like what the fuck happened to you yeah you look yeah. terrible mm -hmm. and i think one of my one of my oldest friends looked at that photo and he was like dude what happened to you yeah and i was like yep yeah. <laughs> yep you're right 100 percent because there was a point in time where I was like in the best shape of all of my friends. Yeah. And for, a, you know, a five foot nine Indian dude, that's kind of rare. So <laughs> when you, when you yeah. see the difference between that photo and this photo, I look at it now and I'm like, we've still got a ton of work to do, but like, I'm still making headway towards that goal. Right. So like, if you told me two years ago that I would have hiked up the same, um, like essentially mountain range that the British SAS use for their yeah. like training, like assessments, mm -hmm. I would have laughed and been like, yeah, that's not like, I don't do that kind of stuff, but yeah. that that's cool. I did that two weeks ago. Yeah. Because like, it's just now part of the identity shift that has changed me from working with you guys from like doing the default game retreat. That is now part of my identity as someone who does those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think a lot of people can relate to that because it sounds like when you looked at that photo, you almost like don't even recognize yourself. You're like, what happened to you in the past? Mm -hmm. Who are you compared to who you know you should be? And now you have that identity shift again, taking place where you are the guy who does those insanely hard physical challenges, who crushes them, like the retreat yeah. in Nashville and like this crazy hike. I remember you sending me the video at the top of this freaking mountain, but you have that identity shift take place, it seems like. Yeah, 100%. And and the the funny part is, is now when I speak to my friends who have known me for years and years and they speak to me now versus they spoke to me a month ago, they're like, you're completely different. And this mindset shift obviously happened after the national retreat and after the time that I spent with you and Joey and Jeremy and everyone else. But the difference between when we first started working together 
and the person that they knew, you know, six months before that, they were like, dude, you've changed so much. And then now they see me now and they're like, who are you? Yeah. Like, I don't even recognize you now. Like you look completely different. Yeah, sure. But like who you are as a person is fundamentally different. Wow. Yeah. That's, I mean, I think that's a, the biggest value out of, out of something like this, right. Is like the, the looks transformation becomes like number five or six or seven on the list of benefits yeah. that people get out of this, which I'm, I'm so happy to see that. Cause I've, I've known you personally through this whole process and I can say the same thing hundred percent. Like I, I love the physical transformation. Obviously it's, it's amazing. Right. But um, just seeing you improve as a person and grow as a person and become somebody who is literally capable of loving and impacting at a higher level that's been the most fulfilling part of me watching you progress. Um, how do you feel like that identity shift and that growth as a person, and of course the physical gains as well, how has mm. that impacted your life overall? I think the big consideration for me was like, whatever I achieved in the business world wasn't reflected in what I saw in myself physically and mentally mm. and what other people would draw conclusions of, right? So Again, kind of thinking all the way back to when I was at college, I was that guy. Like I was in crazy shape. I was still doing all of like the cool stuff. I was, you know, part of the American football team, blah, 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 all this stuff. But then when I got to like into my actual job, that kind of fell off. Right. And then when I started my own business, it fell off even more. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, David's doing this cool thing. Like he's running his own business, but like, ugh, have you seen him recently? He doesn't look great. Right. Right. And then that became internalized in my own mind where the thing that I was focusing on was growing the business because that was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And now I look at it like all of these things play into each other. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I can go out with my friends and go and, you know, enjoy like a seven, eight pint night. And then the next day I'm completely wrecked mm -hmm. and I can't focus on the business but I had one night that I enjoyed it. Whereas now I look at it and I'm like, okay, yeah, great. I'm going to do this. And then tomorrow morning I'm going hiking for 10 miles. So I can't do seven, eight pint nights anymore. Not that I'm, and I think it's a small part of it is like, I don't enjoy the idea of it anymore because I know that like the Sunday morning hike is coming and that's something I really enjoy in the weekend. Mm -hmm. Or I don't want to go out and finish a bottle of wine at dinner because actually mm -hmm. I have stuff to do tomorrow morning. I need to wake up and go to the gym or I need to go and do X, Y, and Z because in the evening I'm looking forward to this other thing. It's just a way more long-term view of the like of right. my week or even my month mm -hmm. versus it being like, oh, I'm going to optimize for the right now. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Like almost that more long-term gratification shift versus that short-term gratification. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, dude, I think a lot of a lot of guys can like resonate with your story really heavily. Um, especially a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of just men in general who tend to stack up the responsibilities while neglecting themselves because everything else seems more important and they forget yeah. that if they fall apart, then all those things that matter to them fall apart too. So yeah. um, if you're speaking to a guy, whether they're a business owner or just somebody who related to that struggle, what would you say to them as the reason that they need to take action and change their life right now? I knew that I needed to do something, but the something that I would have done doesn't look like this. And the reason that I've seen so much success is because I went through this instead of kind of trying to go back to the stuff that I already knew. Because the stuff that I already knew involved two, three hours in the gym. It involved, you know, basically going on a full-blown bodybuilding diet of like 85% protein and some vegetables so that my gut didn't kill me. Mm -hmm. That is not feasible for when you're running a business. You need energy, you need nutrients, you need a long-term vision on how you can optimize performance. Mm -hmm. You need accountability, like you give accountability to the people that you work with. And everything needs to fit in with what you do in all of the, the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing for me when I came through Default Kings was the understanding of, okay, it's kind of like delegating this thing that you would ordinarily have to put a lot of mental energy and effort into, into the hands of people that know exactly how to do it. It's the same as every other facet in business. Right. If I can take the thinking out of this, and that's this is exactly what I said to you at the start. I was like, I don't know how to th think about anything. Literally don't make me think. Just tell me exactly what to do and I'll do it. And you were like, okay, we'll do it. And then that's exactly what happened, right? Like I didn't have to think about anything and I just did exactly what I was told. 
Mm-hmm. And because of that, the mental change happened, which meant that it wasn't this, you know, arduous trek up a mental mountain mm-hmm. to change small things. It was as easy as, hey, maybe we can cut down on this, or maybe we can cut down on that, or maybe we can do this instead, or maybe we can add this in. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I can do that. And then it's done versus me having to sit and go, okay, well, yeah, I could do this, but then that comes with this downside or blah, 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 blah. It mm. just removes that, that mental roadblock of actually doing the thing and turns it into, okay, well, do you want to do this or this? Oh, I'd rather do that. Okay. Then go do that. Yeah. So That's you awesome. just simplify the logic in your brain and it just makes it so much easier. Mm-hmm. Dude. I love that. I love hearing that because man, I think the limits in for a lot of people just begin in the mind, Right. And it was so clear that so many of those walls just got absolutely crumbled for you through this process. And now you're just firing on all cylinders. Makes me happy, man, dude. Hey, man. That's it, brother. I appreciate you uh, just doing all your hard work through this system. Cause yeah, I know it's, it's made you a better person. It's made you a, a better friend, personally, a better man in my own life. And um, I think that you are truly an inspiration to so many people who we all probably know personally who have been struggling with what you struggled with before, brother. So thank you for being you and thank you for all your hard work. Appreciate you, my friend. All right, guys, that's it.